Hi, I'm Emma, and welcome to my channel. In the last video, we downloaded our first program to the robot, but it doesn't do anything. In this video, we'll create a basic teleop program that will let you drive the robot around like an RC car. <laughs> programming languages, one of the first things you do when learning to program is to print out Hello World. With a robot though, we're not really interested in printing things out. The most basic thing a robot can do is move a little. So this is our Hello World for an FTC robot. To get up and running quickly, I'm just going to have you follow the steps one by one. I know that you'll be typing a lot of unfamiliar things, but I'll explain all of it in a lot more detail in the next few videos. The goal for now is to get a basic robot up and running, and then we'll use that as a platform to learn more things. The first thing to know about the FTC framework is that everything starts from an op mode. This is short for operational mode. When you create one, it will show up on the driver station in one of two lists that you can choose from. So we want to make a new op mode, but we need to figure out where to put it. Let's look around for a moment and see what folders we have. At the top level, there are two folders, FTC Robot Controller and Team Code. You'll be putting all of the things you create in the Team Code folder, but let's peek inside FTC Robot Controller for a moment. If you look in the Java folder, you'll see Org, First Inspires, FTC Robot Controller, and then External Samples. This folder is full of sample op modes that first made to demonstrate how to do a bunch of different concepts. If you're looking to do something new or advanced, it's worthwhile to read through some of these to get an idea of how to do it. Now that you know about these, let's collapse them again so we can see our stuff better. Expand team code and you'll see a Java folder. All your code is going to go underneath that folder. You can ignore all the other ones. Inside there, you will see four more nested folders, org, first inspires, FTC, and team code. In Java terms, this forms the package where you put your Java code. The package keeps your code organized and keeps it separate from other files that might be named the same. We'll talk about that a bit more when we cover Java classes. You can create your own sub packages, but for now, we'll just use the one that's there already. Click on the team code package to make sure it's highlighted, and then go up to the file menu and choose new and then Java class. It will pop up a box that asks you what you want to name it. Type tank drive in the name box, make sure that class is selected in the list below, and hit enter. This will create a new tank drive file containing the words public, class, and tank drive. I'll explain what the public and class keywords mean and what classes are, but at the moment it's important to know that right now this is just a plain old Java class. We need to transform it into an op mode so that it will show up on the driver station. Put your cursor between the name tank drive and the open curly bracket and type extends op mode. Op mode will turn red, meaning there's an error. In this case, it means that Java doesn't know what an op mode is yet. To make it understand, we have to import the right class. We could go up to the top of the file and type out a long import statement, but Android Studio gives us an easier way. If you hover your mouse over the red op mode for a moment, it will pop up a box with the action import class. Click that and it will put the necessary import line at the top of the file. Now Java knows what an op mode is, but it still isn't happy. The red line expanded. The error here means that for this class to be an op mode, it's required to have a few methods. We'll talk more about methods later, but for now, just know that methods are where we put most of our code. Just like we did before, hover your mouse over the red line to see the error message and also the quick fixes that Android Studio offers to help with. You should see an implement methods option. Go ahead and click it and it will pop up a box that asks you which methods to create or implement. Make sure that both init and loop are selected and click OK. There, now the red errors are gone. But there is one more step for this to be a proper op mode, and everyone will forget this step at least once. For this op mode to show up in the right list on the driver station, it needs something called an annotation. Add a line right above public class tank drive and type at teleop. 
It is case sensitive, so make sure to type it just like that. Once again, it will be red because Java doesn't recognize it yet. So do the trick where you hover your mouse and then choose import class. Let's test it out. Plug in your robot with the USB cable and click the play button to download it to the robot. After it restarts, it should show up on the driver station under the drop down arrow on the right. To start the op mode, choose it from the list, press init, and then play. To stop it again, press the stop button. Hopefully your op mode ran okay, but you probably noticed that the robot didn't actually do anything useful. Time to change that. We're going to tell the motors to move, but need a way for the code to find the right motors. As you'll see, this will be done using something called the hardware map. But we have to configure some things first on the robot before it will be available there. On the driver station, tap the three vertical dots in the upper right hand corner of the driver station app. This will launch a pop-up menu. Select configure robot from the menu to display the configuration screen. If your robot controller doesn't have any existing configuration files, the screen will display a message indicating that you need to create a file before proceeding. Tap the new button to create a new configuration file for your robot controller. When the new configuration screen appears, the app will do a scan to see what other devices are connected to the robot controller. Tap the portal listing for the control hub. Tap the expansion hub listings to display the input output ports for that device. Tap the word motors to show the motor configuration screen. For our pushbot, there are only two motors connected. You'll want to look at where they're plugged into the control hub to find out which port number to use. For each motor, choose the correct port number on the screen and select the motor type from the drop down list. Next, type in a name for each motor. We'll use left for the left motor and right for the right. Now you can press done all the way back up until you see a save button. Choose save and confirm the name again. Choose the back button to return to the main driver station screen and the robot will restart. Okay, so now we've configured and named two motors. The name that you choose is important because it will be the key that is used to locate the motor in code. Let's head back to Android Studio. Make sure that tank drive is open. Again, notice that there are two methods named init and loop. When an op mode is started, it runs init once and then loop over and over until the op mode is stopped. We need to tell the op mode about the motors we just configured and store references to the motor objects. So we're going to create two fields for that. Put your cursor above the at override annotation on init, but still inside the opening curly bracket of the tank drive class. By placing it outside of the methods but inside the class, that means that these variables will be active as long as the class is active. Type private DC motor left motor and end it with a semicolon. The word DC motor will be read, so do the hover over quick fix and choose import class. On the next line, type almost exactly the same thing, private DC motor, but then type right motor instead and end the line with a semicolon again. You won't need to import DC motor again because you already did it with left motor and once is enough. We just defined two fields to hold our DC motor objects, but they're empty at the moment. We didn't put anything in them. We'll need to do this part inside of the init method. Put your cursor inside the pair of curly brackets that follows init. Type left motor equals hardware map dot get left parenthesis DC motor dot class comma double quotes left. You'll notice that when you typed the parentheses in the double quote, Android Studio automatically added the matching one for you. And as always, end the line with a semicolon. We'll need to duplicate this line and change it a bit. A quick and easy way to do this is make sure your cursor is on the line and then choose edit Duplicate line. Now all you have to do is replace left with right on the second line. There. What this code does is ask the hardware map object to please find a DC motor object named left or right and return it to us. 
Then we store that object into the variable that we created to hold it. The only thing left to do is to make the motors actually go. We're going to do that in loop. Remember that loop executes over and over while the op mode is running. Each time around the loop, we want the code to ask the gamepad for a number from the joystick and then use that number to tell the motor how fast it should spin. We'll be using the joysticks on the controller in a setup called tank drive. When controlling a robot like this, the left joystick goes up and down and controls the forward and backwards of the left side of the robot, and the right joystick controls the right side. To drive forward, push both sticks forward. Backwards is both sticks backwards. If you wanted to turn left, you would press forward on the right stick and backwards on the left. We'll do this in two steps in the code. Inside the loop method, this time, type double left power equals negative, no space, gamepad1 dot left underscore stick underscore y, semicolon. Duplicate this line again and replace left with right again. Notice that we snuck a negative sign in there. That's important because on most gamepads, when you press the joystick forward, it's actually a negative value. We want it to be positive, so we use a negative sign to invert it. Below the line that has right power, add a new line and type left motor dot set power parenthesis left power semicolon. Once more, duplicate the line and replace left with right. At this point, there's a problem with our code, but let's try running it and see if we can figure it out. Go ahead and download it. Once you've downloaded the code, don't forget to unplug your USB cable. Make sure you have plenty of space around the bot because it can move this time. Like before, choose Tank Drive from the dropdown, press in it, and then play. The robot shouldn't move unless you push the joysticks. Go ahead and try it. Oops, it moves, but it just spins in a circle. What's up with that? Well, in our code, you'll see Set Power. By default, when you send a motor a positive number, it will start spinning in a clockwise direction. The problem is that on one side of the robot, we want the motors to turn clockwise but we want the other side to turn counterclockwise. The left side is probably the one we need to change, so let's go back up to the init method and add this line after the two motor equals lines. Type left motor dot set direction parenthesis direction dot reverse in all caps. Semicolon. Do the hover import trick again but this time you'll have a choice of classes to import. Choose Direction in DC Motor Simple. Download the code and run it again, and voila! You should have a robot that you could drive around. But whoa, that was a lot of stuff we typed in. If you want to know what all of those words mean, continue on to the next videos in this series.